This video shows a pulley subassembly and assembly in CATIA. First, we use the given zip file to extract the given files. Here are the given parts. Let's open the assembly design workbench. In this workbench, we are going to focus on the subassembly. Right click to update the product name. Make sure your product name is consistent with the product file name. Use save management to save the product file at the very beginning. Right click the product name, use existing component to import the given parts. To the subassembly, the parts included are the socket head shoulder screw washer, shoulder support, and pulley. The only one you do not want to import is the threaded shoulder support. Use the control key to select the parts. There are two washers needed. Use a copy and a paste to create the second washer. Use the manipulation icon to pull out the parts. Make sure you can see all the parts on the current screen. After that, you are going to use a snap icon to determine the right orientation of the major component. In our case, the major component is the shoulder support. Next, we use the fix icon to fix the major component since it helps control the final orientation of the subassembly. Now we are ready to do the constraints. Use the coincidence and the contact constraint to constrain the parts. When you use the coincidence constraint, make sure you carefully determine the center lines of the cylindrical feature so that the center lines can be aligned in the certain direction. When you use the contact constraint, make sure you carefully select the surfaces so the surfaces can be touched. Always make sure you use the update icon to update the work. After you believe you have all of the constraints applied, you are ready to test your constraints. You can use the explode icon and the manipulation icon to test the assembly respectively. When you use the manipulation, make sure you especially rotate the parts along the X or Y or Z direction so that when you update the work, you can see if there are any missing constraints. Next step is to use manipulation to generate the exploded view. We are going to pull out the parts along the Y direction. Make sure you leave enough spacing between the parts no part blocked by the others. Use Enhanced Scene icon to generate the exploded view. Give the property name and change the partial to full and then capture the exploded view, exit out. Under the application, you can see the exploded view. Update the work to obtain the subassembly. Now we're gonna use the generate numbering to label the parts. Finally, we're ready for the view of material. 
you can name the format, change it to the TXT file, and then you can use the given view of material to, de to determine the order of the properties. To the subassembly, make sure you have the number, name, quantity, type, material listed in this sequence order. Carefully select the properties from the right side window and then use the arrow key to move them to the left window. We do not have the material, so select the last properties as anyone listed and then you can change the name later on. This is the subassembly completed. Now we're going to switch to the pulley assembly. Open a new assembly workbench. Make sure you follow the naming convention to name this product at the very beginning and use the new product name to be your product file name. Carefully select the pro product file name you want to save. Save it in the same place with your subassembly and the other parts. Use the existing component to import your subassembly and the last part, the threaded shoulder support. Let's fix the subassembly. And then use the constraints to constrain the subassembly and the threaded shoulder support. We use the coincidence and the contact constraint to constrain the subassembly and the threaded shoulder support. It seems like we have the sub-assembly at this moment. Let's test the constraints. First, we use the explode icon. It passed. And then we use the manipulation, especially with the rotation. Now we see the missing constraint. We'll try the angle constraint to fix this issue. We want to make sure the bottom two surfaces are aligned. Test it again. Now I passed. Let's use a manipulation to generate the exploded view. Pull out the parts in the Y direction. And then use the enhanced seam to generate the exploded view. Use update icon to see the final assembly. Use generate numbering to label the parts. Use a bill of material to arrange the properties you want to show in the bill of materials.